Welcome to another episode of Riffing Right with Dave and Wally. Today we have a special guest. We have Kristen, who's with our Building and Roofing Science Division of That's GIF. Yep. So what we're going to go over here in the next couple days, next videos, if you will, are cold storage mm -hmm. details mm -hmm. and actual installation. Since we're talking about cold storage, why is airflow, why, why are they such a different animal than a regular building? Well, the first thing that we're concerned about when it comes to cold storage is it's not your typical facility. So sometimes you could have a blast freezer where the temperatures go all the way down to negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas... It's cold, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> it's really it is. Cold. Yeah. So maybe your typical office building may be in the 70s. So it becomes extremely important for potential energy savings to make sure that you're insulating your cold storage facility to keep it cold on the inside. So it's very critical to control that airflow, if you will. We want to control the airflow. We want to keep it cold on the inside and keep that warm air on the outside. Because what happens is if we have the cold air that meets the warm, we have condensation. Mm -hmm. And so the air condenses and we could have icicles on the interior. We could have slippery surfaces. Unless you like ice skating around your, <laughs> your work area, that's probably not a good idea. And a potential snowstorm inside a building. Snowstorm. What, what would happen if, if the insulation got wet? Now, doesn't that take away from the R value? Yeah. So you want to keep obviously that from happening too. We want too. to keep the insulation from freezing. Can so, you take a guess on what the R value of frozen insulation might be? I'm, I'm guessing not much. Yeah. Not much. Yeah. That sure adds a lot of weight to the roof though too. It adds oh, a lot of weight yes. to the roof. So frozen insulation actually is about equivalent to wet insulation. So the R value comes down to almost zero. So in which case it's almost like not even having any insulation Which at is all. reduced efficiency. Reduced efficiency. So wow. on a metal deck like we're inside this building, you know, just for example, how can that air flow through a metal deck? Where well, are some areas that we really need to be worried about? Well, we have a couple of areas that we're concerned about with the, the easy one to think about is at the perimeter. So where the deck meets the wall interface, we want to make sure that we're sealing that interface. We don't want any air traveling around where our deck ends, mm -hmm. but also through our mechanical penetration. So if we have a mechanically attached system, anywhere that we have a fastener is a potential for air to be coming through our roof system. So that's why we want to think about, and we'll talk about this later in some of the other videos, where we'll have mechanically attaching the first layer of insulation and then every subsequent layer after that is adhered. So if we can bury our fasteners, that really limits the ability for air to travel through our roof assembly. So that's wow. just kind of one way to mitigate that airflow. Yep. And there's all kinds of other ways that we'll talk about in our videos coming yep. up here shortly. You're, you're sealing everything. You're sealing the deck, seal. you're sealing the walls, you're sealing the drip edge the drip or edge. the edges. Yeah. Wow. All right, so stay tuned. Thanks for joining uh, Roof and Right with Dave and Wally. If you want any further information, feel free to look at our website, gif.com slash cold storage.